Hey guys, welcome back. Ashley D. Will here, author, teacher, life coach. I hope everyone is doing well. Today I want to go over a post on my blog. The title is Benefits of Addiction. This is an interesting post. It's actually a testimony of my deliverance from sugar addiction, but it was a process. And so many people with a superficial view would come up to me and say, wow, Ashley, you are sinning because you are eating half a chocolate cake one day and the rest of the chocolate cake the next day. That is the sin of gluttony. You are condemned and you must repent and get it together to serve the Lord, right? Well, the Lord is deeper than that. And the issues that we struggle with are deeper than that. And this post will help give you some insight into the depth of some potential issues that you have and that maybe people you know have. So just know the Lord is there and he's wanting to help you with this issue. He wants to show you why it's happening. He doesn't want to condemn you in it. He wants to heal you of it. So be open to what he shows you. And hopefully this post will help. So benefits of addiction. This was posted on August 30th, 2013. I believe you, I said, when my doctor assured me that he could help. I also believe deep down, I lowered my voice, that I'll be the one person you won't be able to help. Psst, what are you struggling with? A nagging problem? A negative cycle, a secret habit. Lord knows we all struggle with something and with our struggle comes a benefit. Yes, there is a benefit to every behavior, even the negative ones. The reason you keep repeating the behavior is that at some level you are getting a benefit from it. So think about it. What is the benefit you are getting out of the repeated behavior? Ask God for insight, wisdom, and for eyes to see it. Then ask for faith, humility, and courage to defeat it. Many addictions and issues we have are literally impossible for us to overcome. But the good news is that we serve the God of the impossible. And when we lift up our issue to the God of the impossible and we agree to submit to his process, we can and will be delivered of it. So the benefit that we enjoy from the problem keeps us locked in a prison of repeated behavior. What could the benefit be, do you think? If you make a change to fix the problem, what will it require of you? Is avoiding that requirement a benefit? Are you avoiding the pain or shame or overwhelm of facing the underlying issue? Are you trying to avoid the disappointment or consequences of addressing the problem? Are you avoiding stress, rejection, or confrontation? Einstein said, insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So for us to repeat the same behavior while expecting different results is insane. The problem is that we may understand Einstein's idea cognitively, but fail to apply it in our lives because the habit involves going deeper than simple cognition. It requires dealing with emotion. Emotion is where the rubber meets the road. In a room full of troubled people, when asked who will deal with their issues involving emotions, few will step up to the plate. Years ago, I trudged slowly down the road of recovery from an autoimmune disease, the result of improper amalgam removal, and had to eliminate one at a time foods that proved harmful to me. I was so tired of hearing, oh, don't be so extreme, and everything in moderation, I was so tired of doctors telling me to take more pills. I was so sick and tired of being sick and tired. All I wanted was to heal and feel good again. 
I knew God was in the healing business, and I was willing to do whatever it took to make it happen. Once again, it was time for God to lead me down a road of discovery and recovery. Of the foods I had to eliminate, the sugar monster gave me the most stringent run for my money. When I cannot defeat a foe, I can usually trace it back to a trauma. And that was the case in this instance. Defeating the sugar monster required me to do some private detective work on my personal history. Through talking about my childhood with my mother and looking through her photos of me, I came to find my answer. The sugar monster had taken hold of me early in life. At the tender age of six months, I was left with caregivers who regularly consoled me with, guess what, sugar. Sugar, sugar, and more sugar. I actually found a photo of me eating one of those orange foam peanuts while sitting in the caregiver's lap. I found another photo here on the blog of me eating birthday cake at my second birthday party. By the look in my eyes, I seem to have surrendered fully and gladly to the sugar monster. So, I fast-forwarded to real time, and God revealed to me two terrifying facts. Fact number one, all of my life, sugar had been my primary attachment because I had never bonded with my mother. Fact number two, all of my life, sugar had been an addiction because I was a slave to it. 2 Peter 2, 19b. The sugar monster turned out a Goliath to defeat because the roots of its vicious hold had burrowed very deeply into my tender soul. And to boot, my emotions had wrapped their hungry little tentacles as tight as a rubber band around the monster and were not planning on letting go, ever. I knew that submission to God's major soul surgery was the only chance I had in bringing down this formidable enemy. Okay, God, I leveled with him. I want freedom. I unzip my soul before you. Do what you got to do. Soon enough, God led me to a doctor who specialized in healing the body with food. He was a mentee of Dr. Pompa. Amazing truths they teach and fascinating results they see in their cooperative patients. But the doctor's help would not have been as effective if I had not also gone deep with God to deal with the emotional elements involved in the addiction. I had to go deep to sever the roots of the addiction. Otherwise, no matter what other food changes I made, I would have stayed helplessly trapped in the clutch of the sugar monster and unable to heal my body to the extent I desired. Or I would have traded the sugar addiction for another addiction. As I studied the childhood photos, God showed me that I had attached to sugar instead of to my mother. Wow, what a knockout realization. That insight gradually revealed the far-reaching implications of my bondage. The benefit of my addiction was avoidance of facing the pain, loss, and grief of abandonment. So, I witnessed a sweet little girl held hostage by a big scary monster but how in the world could I help her? God showed me that I was the only one who could rescue the tot from the monster. No one else but me in the whole world could access her because she was all alone, trapped in that photo. And she was me. The only possible rescue mission involved me becoming the loving, available mother that the lonely child needed. If I could become that to her, she could actually consider letting go of the monster and bonding with me instead. So I did. As a brave and caring adult, I went back and crashed that two-year-old birthday party. With an invitation from God, I walked into that 1967 photo and approached her with kindness and sensitivity. I couldn't believe it. She was waiting for me. She listened to my words. 
She understood my offer and she trusted me. I picked her up. She wrapped her arms around my neck. I felt her warm tears on my shoulder. I comforted her and promised her that I would always be available to take good care of her. That began the healing. Over a period of about 18 months off and on with God's leading in number one, the doctor's nutritional guidance, and number two, my grieving the loss of attachment to sugar instead of to my mother, I finally came to slay Goliath. The experience was painful and challenging, but I had no choice. Freedom was calling me, and I couldn't deny it. I can testify truthfully that the taste of freedom is sweeter than any sweet I ever ate. I met the doctor in July of 2011, and he has done wonders for me. And yes, he has taught me how to live happily without sugar. The only source he allows me is very dark chocolate, and that's because of the huge benefit from the high fat content in it. So I'm good with that. As for the little girl, she has successfully bonded with me, and I take good care of her every day. I share this true story to encourage anyone who is dealing with any kind of undesirable behavior that there are answers and solutions. The only question you must ask yourself is this. Do I want freedom bad enough to pass through a temporary, painful valley of priceless learning and growing and healing? Your answer to that question determines whether you will continue your miserable cycle for the rest of your life. Figure out the benefit you're enjoying in the problem that you're facing. Then decide if you want to keep repeating it for the rest of your life. It's your choice. 2 Peter 2.19b tells us that a man is a slave to whatever controls him. So we can back up and look at our lives and ask the Holy Spirit to help us see what are the things in my life that are controlling me. Is it a type of food or drink? or habit, or relational dynamic with a certain person that I keep getting pulled into? What is controlling me? Is the media controlling me? Well, we are a slave to whatever controls us. So starting there would be step one, to ask the Lord to reveal what is controlling me in my life and then letting him set you free step by step from there as you listen and follow his direction. 1 Samuel 17, 26b says, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Well, this prayer would be, Lord, who and where are the uncircumcised Philistines in my life that are causing me? to defy the armies of the living God. I was having trouble walking close with the Lord because I was a slave to sugar. And being a slave to sugar was a Goliath. The sugar was an uncircumcised Philistine that was causing me not to be able to walk closely with the Lord. 1 Samuel 17.45 says, David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. So when we have a Goliath in our lives, we submit to the Lord and we listen to him and we take his direction and protection and being the God of the impossible, he can slay and will slay any Goliath. In our lives, but we must be submissive to him and follow him in order for that to manifest. Jeremiah 34 8 says, The word came to Jeremiah from the Lord after King Zedekiah made a covenant with all the people in Jerusalem to proclaim freedom for the slaves. This is a foreshadowing of Jesus Christ coming and setting the slaves free. 
we are all slaves to different things, but Christ has broken our chains. The chains may still be on us and feel comfortable, but as we listen and follow him, he will lead us to throw off the chains and walk in freedom. Galatians 5.1 says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Yokes of slavery are everywhere we turn, even in our thought patterns. So it is for freedom that Christ has, past tense, set us free. Once he sets you free in an area, you stand firm in it, and you never let yourself be burdened again by that yoke of slavery. Psalm 119.45 says, I will walk about in freedom, for I have sought out your precepts. When we seek the Lord in his ways and we submit our hearts and lives and relationships to him in his ways, he gradually over time leads us to walk about in freedom because he sets us free one issue at a time. Joshua 24.15 says, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Everyone is free to make his or her choices and live with the consequences. That is God's reaping and sowing principle in the space-time dimension. But for everyone who follows the Lord, he will teach us to sow more and more good seeds so that we will reap more and more good seeds in our hearts, lives, and relationships. So I hope this post has been helpful for you. There is a benefit to an addiction and letting the Lord show you, bottom line, what is the benefit of the addiction what is the bottom line benefit? That will help you know what the issue is that you potentially can deal with and whether you're willing to deal with it. You might not be willing to. You might not be willing to deal with it right now, but maybe at a future time it would be more appropriate, or maybe you're willing to deal with it right now. Whichever your option, let the Lord lead you and he will prove faithful to you because that is his character. So you guys have a blessed day and I'll see you soon. You guys remember to like, subscribe, and share so others can benefit from this information.